the scariest mythical creatures that probably existed. That is exactly what we're going to be talking about today, and this list is spooky. If you're new here, this is actually the third video in my scariest mythical creatures series, but you don't need to have watched those videos to understand this video. Each of my mythical creatures videos is a new list, and just like the other lists, this list starts scary and gets even scarier as the video goes on, and all of these creatures are from different parts of the world. Let's begin. Starting off in the birthplace of freedom, we have Mothman from the US of A. Mothman is one of the most recently discovered creatures on this list, with his story only originating in 1966, relatively recently compared to some of the entries on this list. Mothman was first spotted in the small town of Point Pleasant, West Virginia, but his legend has grown immensely over the years. Early witnesses described Mothman as a large black creature with glowing red eyes, 7 to 10 feet tall and muscular. They claimed it appeared bird-like in nature, but was much too big to be a bird. Something interesting about the Mothman lore is that sightings really only took place from November 15th, 1966 to December 15th, 1967, meaning that there was only about 13 months of sightings. December 15th is actually a pretty significant date when it comes to Point Pleasant history. It was the date of a rather tragic event. The Silver Bridge, also known as the Point Pleasant Bridge, a bridge that connected West Virginia and Ohio, collapsed. Not only did it collapse, but it collapsed during rush hour traffic. This resulted in the death of 46 people and the permanent loss of two bodies. Now, why am I bringing up the Silver Bridge incident? Well, it's because in 1975, the book by John Keel, The Mothman Prophecies, claimed that not only was there paranormal events related to the sightings, but that there was also a connection to Mothman and the collapse of the bridge. To me, that's a pretty serious claim. During the 13 months of active Mothman sightings, there was hundreds, and later on it was revealed that there was over 100 people that were too scared to even admit that they saw the Mothman. With that being said, I put Mothman as number one on the list because I believe that he is definitely scary, but his intentions are too unknown to be truly evil. Although some things have been attributed to him, the only real claims that can be made against him is that he was standing there menacingly, and also the fact that he would potentially bang on the roofs of teenagers' cars. If you've seen any of our other videos, you know that these are extremely tame actions for a mythical creature, and I also believe that the Mothman could have very well existed simply because of all of the evidence there is and how passionate the Point Pleasant community is. This city has a big sculpture of the Mothman in its downtown. Like, this is the one thing to happen in Point Pleasant, and they are not living it down. My personal thoughts on the matter are that since he was only seen for a short amount of time, I think it's very possible that this could have been someone playing an elaborate prank or trying to be a superhero for a short amount of time until they got bored of it. But even if Mothman is some sort of supernatural being, I believe the scariest thing about him is his appearance. And for that reason, he is only number one on the list. And like I mentioned earlier, this video gets scarier as we go on. So let's move on. Second, we have Nixie. The Nixie stems from Scandinavian and German origins. These creatures almost always depict a human female, but they can vary from looking like an old woman with green teeth, skin, and hair to looking like a beautiful woman with green teeth, skin, and hair. They are also often covered in moss, seaweed, and seashells. Although Nixies are sometimes described as having a fish tail in the water, they can appear on land in full humanoid form, but one tell that always gives them away is that their clothes are always slightly damp and dripping water. Nixies are commonly described as nymphs, or water sprites, or even mermaids, and all of which are technically correct, but I believe that most people would probably identify what I've already described as a mermaid. The one thing that makes the Nixie rather unique is the fact that the lore is much older and dates way further back, and also their unique abilities. Some traits that the Nixie shares with mermaids is their infatuation with humans, and their beauty and songs used to seduce sailors, typically into danger. But that isn't always the case. Some Nixies require an annual human sacrifice. Some Nixies have a lust for humans, which has a romantic and not deadly ending, which I won't get into any further detail, but you can imagine. Nixies also have the unique ability to control the weather if irritated. With all of this being said, I think the Nixies are very interesting and infatuating, but I definitely think they are scarier than Mothman for the simple reason that they have more malice intent typically. Not always, but typically. Whereas with Mothman, we have no reported deaths or 
requirements of sacrifice. He's not a sexy green lady, but he's also not necessarily trying to drown you. So I feel like for that reason, the Nixie is a little bit scarier, but not quite as scary as your next entry from Down Under. I'm of course talking about the Bunyip. Not the Bunyin, that's that's something else. The Bunyip. Originating from Aboriginal mythology of Southeastern Australia, the Bunyip is described as an amphibious creature lurking in waterbeds, swamps, creeks, and other watery places. Although physical descriptions of the Bunyip vary drastically, the most common descriptions typically include a round head, an elongated neck, and the body resembling an ox or a hippopotamus or even a manatee. The Bunyip has also been reported to make roaring or booming noises. The Bunyip inhabits and protects these shallow waters and preys upon anyone who dares go near them. One thing that I find pretty ironic is that the Bunyip sometimes is described as having glowing red eyes and also drowning people. So if you really think about it, it's kind of a combination of Mothman and Nixie, the best of both worlds. Or the worst, I guess. The story of the Bunyip and different accounts and drawings have existed for hundreds of years, adding a lot to its validity of its actual history. And although it's never been proven to exist, there are many that would argue the Bunyip is very real. That, combined with the fact that the Bunyip is definitely the most violent creature so far on the list, I'd have to give it the number three spot. Any huge creature with huge claws, glowing red eyes, chilling in the water, just waiting to rip you to shreds is pretty scary in my book. The Bunyip is terrifying and who knows? It might just be real too, but let's hope not. Next up, we have what may be the silliest little guy on the entire list. We have the Tokolosh, or the Tikolosh from South Africa. Physically, the Tokolosh resembles a dwarf-like or even goblin-like water spirit. It is a mischievous and evil spirit that can become invisible by only drinking water or swallowing a stone, which is weird. Could you just imagine like two Tokoloshes? It's like their time to go be mischievous. And one of them's like, hey, let's go invisible. Let's go drink water. And the other guy's just like, no, I think, I think I'm gonna swallow the stone. And the other guy's like, are you sure? We could just drink this water. And he's like, no, 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 I, I like swallowing the stone. I guess no one said they were normal. I know I've kept this segment light so far, but the true reality of the Tokolosh is rather dark. The Tokolosh's sole purpose is to cause humans harm and discomfort at the very least. At its least harmful, a Tokolosh can be used to scare children, but its true power can be used to cause illness and even death to its victim. Now, if you caught what I said there, you might be questioning, what do you mean they can be used by? Who's using the Tokoloshes? Well, Tokoloshes are called upon by malevolent people used to cause trouble to others. These goblin-like creatures are essentially people's henchmen to do their dirty work. These malevolent people are typically witches, focusing specifically on dark magic. And whatever jobs these witches task these tokoloshes with, they will do until completion. And during the night, they will execute their plan. A really interesting part about tokolosh lore is how commonly it's been used in legal situations in South Africa, specifically as a scapegoat for robbery, assault, and murder. I don't know about you, but a short, green, powerful being that could be invisible appearing in your house in the night that can cause you anything from a slight discomfort to death sounds pretty scary to me. And the fact that there's not only just headlines, but court cases involving the Tokolosh as the suspect is the reason why it's included on this list on creatures that have probably existed. The biggest reason why I put the Tokolosh above the Bunyip is the simple fact that the Bunyip can simply be avoided by not going to a swamp at night. The Tokolosh is something that if it's set on you, you're not escaping. And your only real hope is that its intention is just something mischievous and not worse. But it gets worse with our next entry, El Silbon or the Whistler. El Silbon is a Colombian and Venezuelan folklore creature who might have the worst backstory we've heard yet. The legend states that El Sabon started as a young boy who was a spoiled brat whose parents catered to his every wish. One night he demanded his father hunt him a deer as it was his favorite meat, but his father didn't return home that night with the deer. The son killed his father and cut out his organs. He gave these organs to his mother to cook for dinner. His mother cooked them and as they ate them, she realized the meat tasted off. She began to ask where her husband was and she soon put the dots together. Obviously, she was shocked and things did not go well. The mother cursed her son for eternity and afterwards, his grandfather ordered him to be tied up to a post in the middle of the countryside. He lashed his back open until his back was destroyed. The grandfather placed alcohol, chili peppers, and lemon juice in his wounds, and then he put his father's organs in a bag and placed it on the boy's back. The grandfather released two rabid dogs upon him, but before he released the dog, the grandfather condemned the boy to carry the bag of his father's remains for eternity. From that point on, the boy was now El Silabon, a three to six meter tall skeleton-like creature with a bag of bones on its back, with a bloodlust and a vengeance. Why do they call him El Silabon, or the Whistler? It's because he whistles a very specific tune with the musical notes C, D, E, F, G, A, and then B in that order. 
It is said that if you hear this tone, it is a sign of your death. They say if you hear the whistle close to you, your death is far away. But they say if the whistle is in the distance and faint, your death is closer than you think. The whistler is typically known to target drunks and womanizers, but it's not uncommon for him to target innocent victims as well. The whistler uses the element of surprise and typically jumps out of trees. He rips his victims to shreds and adds their bones and remains to the bag on his back, forever carrying all of his victims with him. I don't know about you, but if I heard a very faint whistle and looked around and then saw a three meter tall skeleton-like creature jump out of a tree and rip my bones out, I wouldn't be too happy about it. You might think this story is a bit over the top, but if you talk to any resident of the Los Cienos region of the East Andes in Colombia and Venezuela, I think you'd hear some convincing stories. Kuchi Sake Ona, the slit mouth woman. That is the second last entry on this list and one of the most terrifying by far. The slit mouth woman is a malevolent figure from Japanese folklore. She is described as a malicious spirit in the form of a woman with long straight black hair, pale skin, and scissors or some sort of sharp object in her hand. She is otherwise beautiful, but if she removes her mask, you might change your opinion. Encounters with the slit mouth woman are simple but gruesome and go something like this. You see her and she stops you in your tracks and asks you, am I pretty? If you say no, she'll instantly kill you with the sharp object she has. Now, if you do say she's beautiful, she'll remove her mask, exposing her horribly disfigured and scarred mouth and ask you, how about now? If you tell her no, she will use the sharp object to kill you. But if you agree that she is still beautiful, she'll only disfigure your face to look like hers. Some believe the split mouth woman is a victim of violence and only seeking vengeance. Others believe that she is a yokai and this is her natural form. If the death and face mutilation wasn't scary enough to justify her position on the list, consider this. This is the only mythical creature that requires you to talk to a woman. And if that's not scary, I don't know what is. Now, we've finally made it to the last entry on this list. This is one of the most requested creatures by far ever since I released my first video, which if you haven't seen, watch it after this. Keep in mind, this is only the third installment. This is an ongoing series on the channel, and if you want to see more creatures, please comment them below. I want to make as many videos as you guys want to watch. Now, with that being said, let's get into our final creature. Not actually into it unless that's what you're into. Regardless, our final entry is, and I can already feel some of you guys losing it right now because I'm finally talking about it, it's the Mananangal. Everybody who commented this on all of my videos must have been on a mission to give me nightmares because this is by far, almost inarguably, the scariest mythical creature of all time. At least it's it's gotta be up there. It's definitely the scariest one that I've covered so far. If you're from the Philippines, you know what I'm gonna be talking about. But if you're not, let me just give you a sample of the Mananangal. As you could have guessed, the Mananangal is a Filipino creature. And believe it or not, that's not the scariest part. I'm joking. The Mananangal has large, bat-like wings, a long, thin tongue, vampire-like teeth, and werewolf-like claws. Also, it's not wearing pants. Why? Because it doesn't have a bottom half. The Mononongo's organs and innards are simply dangling from below itself. To be fair, it does have a bottom half, it can just remove it at any time. During the day, the Mononongo are said to be beautiful women who live normal lives It can even be married or in relationships. But at night, they show their true form. Their arms turn into their wings and they separate their torso from their legs, leaving their organs hanging as they fly through the night sky. They prey on sleeping people and their favorite victim are pregnant women. They insert their long tongue into their victim and in the case of of pregnant women, they eat the fetus. And in the case of men, they eat their organs and drink their blood. Now, I don't think there's necessarily a question of why the Mononongal is so terrifying and disgusting. But you may be thinking, is this really something that probably existed? Well, let me offer this. Scholars claimed that there are architectural elements changed by the fear of the Mononongal, specifically in rural regions. Two primary changes include slanted roofs to prevent the Mononongal from landing on it, and strategically placed windows away from bedrooms for reasons you can probably assume. I always love reading the comments you guys leave, and I always love researching the creatures that I end up putting on these lists. If there's a creature that I missed, or if there's some details I missed, please comment them below. Now, keep in mind, these videos are just for fun, and if something sounds a little bit off, just trust me, bro. I appreciate you guys for watching, and until next time, trust me, bro.